Ladies and gentlemen, a good day to you all. I'm here with uh, Right Reverend Dr. Givurgis Mar Theodosius, Episcopa of the Marthoma Church, and we have the privilege uh, to have a chat with him today. After shepherding the Marthoma Church Diocese of North America and Europe for seven plus years, from January 2009 to March 2016, Dr. Givurgis Mar Theodosius is leaving on April 4th 2016, to take charge as the Diocesan Episcopa of the Marthoma Church, Mumbai Diocese. It is customary that we most frequently address Marthoma bishops as Thirumeni, and so you will be hearing me addressing Mar Theodosius as Thirumeni. Thirumeni, I thank you for taking time uh, for this interview on the eve of your departure, and agreeing to share your thoughts and views about your ministry in the Diocese of North America and Europe. Let me begin by asking you uh, what you would like to list as the most significant accomplishments of your ministry in this diocese. Greetings to all of you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to open up my mind to speak about my experience here in the Diocese of North America and Europe. Dr. Matthew Thomas, uh, thank you very much for interviewing me and asking pertinent questions, questions that are relevant to the members of the Mathema Church at large, and particularly to the Diocese of North America and Europe. As I said, I joined this diocese uh, in the month of January in 2009. Two other questions that I face when I join this diocese are, one, how can we retain our young members within the faith community, enabling them to participate in the worship? Mm -hmm. And the second question that I face was, can we make our liturgy more relevant and meaningful, particularly to the new generation? Mm -hmm. So I took time to address uh, these two concerns and uh, I concentrated more on uh, the uh, youth members of our diocese. And I made an effort, an earnest and sincere effort through the years to see that they are in the mainstream of the church and also take up responsibilities to see that the Matama Church uh, gathers together for regular worship and at the same time administer in such a way that the church will be uh, carrying out a servant ministry with a spirit of sacrifice revealed to us through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I believe that I could go to an extent where I could see that the youth members are participating in our church service I'm not uh, claiming that everybody is there, but a uh, the, uh, large percentage of people have turned their mind to be in the church. And I believe that that is a positive sign. I have also seen that uh, our youth members are taking up various responsibilities through the various organizations and also through the administration of the parish. This. Uh, term, uh, we have about seven members from the new generation participating in the decision-making body of the diocese called the Diocesan Council. Therefore, I believe that uh, uh, the first concern was addressed through the seven years I had in this diocese. The second one was about the liturgy. We have made several efforts and the diocese, members of the Diocese and Council, they were also with me in uh, seeing that we conduct uh, regular study classes on liturgy. And then the members of the church, uh, several of them helped me in uh, bringing in chanting in English mm -hmm. instead of the Malayalam songs that you used to incorporate in the liturgy for the Holy Kribana. Now, the liturgy that we use for the Holy Kribana has become so popular that I would frankly say that I'll be missing it <laughs> when I leave this diocese and join the new diocese of Bombay. 
So I believe that uh, both uh, the participation of the youth members in the diocese and also their enthusiasm in participating in the English service according to the liturgy of the church, these have become uh, positive in the growth of our diocese. Yeah, I, I noticed that one of the programs you introduced in, the, in your ministry in this diocese was the Altar Boys and Covenant Girls program. How do you envision that program uh, in, and its future? Introducing the Altar Boys and Covenant Girls program in the life of the Mahatma Church here in the Diocese of North America and Europe came out of a necessity when I observed that our children, after their graduation from high school, they go to various universities, and from that time on, their regular attendance in the local parish is minimal. And uh, uh, it is very difficult for us to get them back into the mainstream of the church. So I thought I, we should be catching them young. Mm -hmm. So when uh, they are active, uh, in the Sunday school and also when they're studying in the schools in the local area. Uh, I thought it is uh, better that uh, Achans become mentors to them and enable them uh, to shoulder some of the uh, um, uh, worship uh, patterns which uh, they can absorb mm -hmm. in, their, in their spiritual life when they participate in the worship of the church. So altar boys and governor girls are given roles. They are also given training. And uh, it is uh, said that uh, they be there for about three years, going through both study and training, so that they will know the faith and faith practices of the church. This is uh, well welcomed by the members of the church mm -hmm. in the diocese. This is also an encouragement uh, uh, for the children when uh, the parents are enthusiastic in seeing that uh, their children are taking up uh, certain roles in the uh, worship services that we have in the church. And that's why it has become relevant and it has become meaningful. And I believe that in the long run, all those who have gone through uh, this spiritual exercise of being uh, altar boys and covenant girls, they will surely be within the fold of the church, understanding the faith and practices of the church, and they'll be able to hand over the same to the upcoming generations. Thirmeni, thank you for that answer and you've highlighted some of the accomplishments that uh, you feel were significant during your term here. Although I know that there are so many other accomplishments that uh, are worth noting. Uh, but one of the big questions I've always wondered is how do you plan your day and how do you go about carrying your activities? Certainly the life of the church and the life of a Christian is based on uh, the Holy Scripture and the meditations that we have in the presence of God. Whenever you think about planning some program within the diocese, you should be able to have a biblical base for your actions. And at the same time, when you have social concerns that you confront, you should take time to reflect upon mm -hmm. how God will face this or what God is doing uh, at a particular instance. And therefore, you should be looking up to Jesus Christ to find out what will be his mind, what will be his attitude. Mm -hmm. And uh, accordingly, we need to pattern our thinking and our action. Certainly, there are set programs within the diocese, and therefore, we go according to the diary that we keep. But then uh, every week we have uh, biblical uh, reflections and uh, that uh, comes through uh, the Sunday sermon notes that are prepared during the week and also the Besora that we do electronically mm -hmm. and also some of the articles that we write in the Mahatma Messenger. So that gives me uh, the style of my functioning here in this diocese each day. It all depends on uh, what is now pending or what is now the immediate need and what is the concern that we are facing. In every diocese, I usually listen to the people, their concern. I have dialogue with them. Mm -hmm. 
Um, whenever I get an opportunity to sit and talk with people, to listen to them, uh, to understand uh, what is the heartfelt desire, uh, that gives me uh, uh, enough uh, food for thought. And uh, that enables me to articulate some of the programs that we need within the diocese. And I have been doing that in the diocese all through the seven years mm -hmm. following this pattern. And that has uh, helped me to think about the revision of the liturgy. That has uh, helped me to think about the altar boys and governing girls. That has uh, helped me to revise the Sunday school curriculum. That has uh, helped me to write uh, relevant uh, uh, articles in uh, Besora as well as in uh, Martama Messenger. I know that Martama Messenger, for which you are the chief editor, uh, that is uh, read widely by our people, not mm -hmm. only members of this diocese. Particularly the one that we brought very recently about Sakriyas mm -hmm. uh, I believe uh, uh, people at various continents, they had an opportunity to read it. Now that we have uh, all these things uh, uh, online in website, uh, that gives an opportunity for people to read them uh, wherever they are. Mm -hmm. So uh, the diocese is not uh, simply confined to the geographical space that we usually see. Uh, the uh, diocese is within the global structure and the global world is looking at you as uh, what you are saying, what you are doing, how you are. Uh, reflecting on certain social issues and the like. And that has helped this diocese to grow, not only within the geographical space, but also uh, worldwide. One of the programs we launched was the Going Green Project. And it was in conjunction with the celebrating the Silver Jubilee of your di Episcopal consecration. Do you have any idea how many trees you have planted in this diocese by now? I won't be able to tell you the exact number, but uh, I can very uh, strongly say that almost all parishes planted at least one tree uh, during the Episcopal visit, and they have taken the initiative to plant even other, uh, at other occasions. And then uh, uh, even in the diocesan center, we are always uh, interested in planting trees, flower trees, fruit trees. Uh, and at the same time, every year going for the vegetable garden, which is uh, uh, a, a hobby for us, mm -hmm. at the same time giving us uh, enough food for the year. Uh, one of the things is, uh, in addition to what you have already mentioned, you have attempted several reforms in the church. And uh, I would like to know what your vision is for the future. I believe that the church is to be a graceful church. When I say a graceful church, uh, it is not on the merit of the members who come to the church that we receive them or we give them blessing through the church. Even when they are away from the mainstream, even when they are not uh, keeping up to the standard uh, which we usually envisage from a regular member of the church, the church should be going out to meet them enabling them to understand that uh, the church is a welcoming church and the church believes in uh, giving forgiveness mm -hmm. the church believes in having reconciliation church believes in redeeming people so that they will understand the grace of god which uh, almighty god revealed to us through the grace of our lord and savior jesus christ mm -hmm. and therefore i believe that the church is to be a graceful church do you have any regrets or anything that you think you could not accomplish during your term here in this diocese? I, I believe that the church as a whole, Matama Church as a whole, should have a global outlook. Mm -hmm. And that should be also seen in the life of the Diocese of North America and Europe. In uh, both ends, when I say the headquarters of the Matama Church uh, in Tiruvalla, where people gather together for Sapa Mandalam and other decision-making bodies. The outlook we, right now we have is uh, use of Malala language and also our thinking is more or less uh, the thinking of the local community over there. Instead of understanding the number of believers that are added through the language areas or cultural areas through our mission activities, 
and also our diaspora community. And therefore, the parent church should have a global outlook mm -hmm. while not uh, giving away any of the heritage that we have as a church, which, we are, which is Martha Mama Church being an ancient church with a good tradition. Uh, in the same way, being here in the United States of America or in uh, Canada or in uh, UK and Europe, there is a tendency to be parochial, I would say, mm -hmm. thinking only about uh, what is happening in the particular country, the nation, and also to the people. But then uh, the global events, are, uh, they are marking uh, uh, certain uh, uh, signs in the life of everyone. The refugee problem, for example, mm -hmm. or the incidents that are happening in uh, Syria uh, and places like in Africa and other countries. Uh, we cannot ignore all these things. These are real incidents of human life. Mm -hmm. And that should be a, a concern for the people, whether they are in America or in Europe or in Canada. And therefore, I believe that uh, the global outlook should be there for every parish when they are active locally. You have uh, uh, traveled quite extensively in the country and even outside the country. Uh, and I'm sure you would have a lot of uh, experiences traveling. Would you like to highlight your travel experiences, how you felt about it, and any interesting interactions that you have had? Uh, the travel ex uh, experiences were quite enriching. But uh, let me also hasten to say that uh, it was not that easy. I would As uh, I had to travel through weather zones and time zones and uh, adjust my programs accordingly wherever I am going. But then I have learned uh, so many things by seeing people in different geographical space, mm -hmm. uh, having different outlook. In general, I can say that the people, they follow some discipline in life as far as civic life is concerned. And people who are uh, the leaders or people who are assisting you in uh, different uh, offices, uh, they are more courteous. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to be polite. And uh, those qualities are good qualities which uh, everybody should understand. Uh, coming to the life in the church, uh, some of the people, particularly the new generation, uh, they are uh, um, saying that the church life is boring not because the liturgy is not meaningful. I would say because what they hear and what they see in the church life is not palatable mm -hmm. according to their norms and according to the culture in which they are growing. And therefore, there's a, a need for us to open our eyes to see what is going on and also understand uh, how people are polite, courteous, and people want to serve. Uh, and those good qualities are to be absorbed. And if, the, if you find any negative quality, that should be shunned as well. That is very uh, insightful because uh, I think that is, we are gradually losing that perspective of service and uh, politeness in interacting. And I'm glad you've highlighted that. At this time, would you uh, like to share some parting thoughts to the people in the diocese um, as to whatever message you want to leave them with? As I'm leaving uh, the Diocese of North America and Europe to join uh, the Diocese of Bombay, uh, I'm leaving the Diocese uh, uh, with a very peaceful and calm mind, understanding that uh, I have done my share within the uh, seven plus years God has given to me through the church to serve here. I believe that the Mahatma Church here in the Western Hemisphere has got a great role to play. Not to remain always saying that we are a diaspora community or to say that we are an ethnic church, but to understand that uh, we are now rooted here in the soil mm -hmm. and therefore you are uh, the salt of the earth and light of the world and therefore you should be very live active, dynamic, and fruitful. I would say that uh, even on the spiritual level, the, the members of the Mahatma Church has got uh, uh, so many things to contribute to the people in the Western Hemisphere. And let me also say that uh, the values that we hold as uh, 
understanding Christian life as a servant of the Lord and servant of the people, and also a sacrificial dimension which we should uh, retain. Mm -hmm. These are qualities which will transform every community over here. And let us also remember that the land in which uh, our people are now growing and thriving, this is a land of immigrants. And therefore, every person you meet on the road is an immigrant. Yes. And therefore, uh, being together, we have things to learn from them. At the same time, we have things to contribute. And always remember that God's great love is asking us to serve others, love each one as God loved us through His Son, Jesus Christ. Well, Theodore, Sister many. I want to thank you for uh, taking this uh, a time to give us your interview and for sharing your views and thoughts with us. Um, we thank you for your services in this diocese and we wish you God's choicest blessings as you journey on to serve in the Mumbai diocese and the world all over. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for listening to uh, what I said right now and thank you Dr. Matthew Thomas for interviewing me and may this conversation be a blessing to everyone, bringing glory to God and also helping uh, the furtherance of the kingdom of God. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you.